So is Adama Traore proof that athleticism is not what makes you a good soccer player? Now look at this guy. Look at the guns on this guy. Now I've got this comment in a one of many different ways, several different times when I state that the United States produces more top level athletes than any other country in the world, that if we prioritize soccer, we would start winning World Cups more than anyone else in the world. This name always comes up as proof as to why I'm wrong. So, does Adama Traore prove me wrong? Well, the short answer is, of course he doesn't prove me wrong. Adama Traore being incredibly athletic is actually one of the reasons he is the professional soccer player that he is. I mean, let's take a look at some of the teams that Adama Traore has played for. For starters, Adama Traore has played for Barcelona, Aston Villa, Middlesbrough, Wolverhampton Wanderers, Barcelona again, and Fulham. So, he has several appearances in both the English Premier League and La Liga, the two best leagues in the world. But I already know what you're saying. Adama Traore isn't that good. He's not that good. Well, that's relative. He's not that good compared to the very, very best soccer players in the world. Compared to normal people, he's freakishly good at soccer. But the obvious question is, if Adama, Adama Traore is so good and so athletic, why isn't he as good as Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo? It must be because of his athleticism and not something else, right? Wrong. Guys. Adama Traore is a fantastic soccer player, but he is not a complete soccer player. His biggest asset is his athletic abilities, his pace, his agility, his ability to run and be strong, hold off challenges. You don't believe me? Take a look at this. So take a second and just pause this to read for a moment. All right, that's probably enough. So as you can tell, Adama Traore's problem isn't that he's so athletic it makes him a bad player. It's that he lacks some of the technical and tactical qualities to make him more effective overall. And here's the thing. That doesn't mean that you can't be athletic and technical as well. Because here's the thing. Think of who is considered the best players in the world right now. My mind goes for a top two of Kylian Mbappe and Erling Haaland, both of whom are athletic specimen. They are both freakishly athletic. Kylian Mbappe is one of the most explosive athletes I have ever seen in soccer. And Haaland is a monster. The man is big, tall, strong. He's fast as lightning. And those are some of the reasons why he's they're the two best players in the world. But it's not just them. These two guys as well. Messi and Ronaldo. Part of the reason they're as good as they are, or as good as they were, is they're athletic freaks. And I already hear you saying, no, Messi wasn't athletic. Messi's short. Being short doesn't mean you're unathletic. Messi has some of the best acceleration, deceleration, and change of directions I've ever seen in an athlete of any sport, not just soccer. And Cristiano Ronaldo, let's face it, he's what you would have if you built your ideal soccer player in a machine, like in a lab. The guy's fast, he's strong, he can jump really, really high. The man is brilliant athletically. And here's the thing. All of this comes back to the idea that Americans simply are incapable of getting both the athletic qualities and the technical and tactical soccer specific qualities that are necessary to be an elite soccer player. And that is just absolutely silly. American athletes are just as smart as anyone else in the world. There isn't some inherent European and South American gene that makes them better at understanding soccer than we do. At the end of the day, soccer technique and tactics 
are learned traits. And American athletes will learn them exactly the same as European athletes already do.